So remember when you're getting into each particular movement sequence here, the biggest thing you want to be in control of is you earn your postural alignment or awareness. The feet aren't externally rotated in a bias. They plant themselves over the hip joints. You're working on pushing your knees out. Take that big toe, anchor that back in. Now you've built some actual intentional tension. Your pelvis is tucked underneath you as if you're starting in a neutral profile where you're not excessive here. You're also not excessively here. And the shoulder blades are going to start activating. From these particular sequences or these cues, you can get a lot more intentional range of motion or space available for you as you extend through each particular repetition. So keep that in mind when you're activating a lot of these particular movements. Here we go. So the first one we're going to look at, the other blades are in, you're stepping through, pulling around the hip profile, or you're getting that intentional pull through the back spacing here that can end up with our hips getting a little bit more internal rotational capacity, get in a smaller angle. I'm going to step through here, I'm working on pulsing my pelvis forward, shoulder blades are down and back. And I would just want to do about two to three per side. I'm just earning that particular tension point and getting that range of motion where I need it to, that axis point. And then I'm stepping back. This is again working on earning that extreme position you may end up in when you're competing or activating in a multitude of angles. Next one we can look at is going to be a step over exercise. Let's follow the letter L. My heels more or less are my feet. When I go to take this step, it's imperative this knee doesn't collapse in. So I don't get that lack of pull or lack of length into this particular indoor sequence or this interior sequence here through the grunt. So as I step through, tension points stay the same. I'm pushing the knees out, pelvis comes through, head's going to be nice and aligned, and I just sequence my arms through here. Stepping through and I breathe in as I come up. Again, allowing me to earn some more space here comfortably, not in an aggressive manner as if I was lunging right away. Just earning that space and creating space in the actual hip joint. Now, particularly more through that external rotation or that external extreme position I can get. And I'm whipping this arm across to help open up this diagonal sling that gives us a lot of power, presence, or stability when we are changing direction. Another great one there. Uh, another good one that we can do is get an extension where we're stepping through, pushing off that back foot, and I'm extending up. This will combat all that constant concave positioning we've been in or posture that we've been in, where you've really been kind of hunched over sitting for long periods of time. And then when I want to get into aggressive forms of core activation, I'm not actually getting it, I'm just getting hip flexor activation and my lower back feels rather tight and restricted. It's because they're correlated or connected. So I need to create space here instead of being in such a compressive manner, I need to expand that area and help with my breathing and help open up the sequences of the front of my body. So this step profile with the back push helps teach that dorsiflexion and healthy hip extension in the context of extending or adding some form of extension through the lower back. Another good exercise here to help us with a warm up sequence. As I step again, I'm earning those positions, knees out, pelvis in, reaching up, pushing off that back foot profile. That front leg just essentially clears space for me to propel and intentionally earn that dorsiflexion or that extension that I need to get on my toes. This will also get us ready for athletic movements or agility components from a whole footprint needs to be part of that equation or part of that movement sequence. Another great one is we can get into a side bend where I'm earning what we call triple joint loading sequences to the side to help with the transition. If I'm sitting through my ankle joint, my knee joint, my hip joint, shoulder blades now are in a wider profile and I earn those components of side bending or side loading and I go against the grain, I'm gonna get a nice elongated stretch out of this particular sequence. And I'll also retrain my body to get out of this type of dead position for my external bias doesn't allow me to change direction in a very healthy manner. It's actually very sketchy or very risky. And more or less, we all walk like that. So it's imperative to try to fix some of those components. So if we do it in our warm up sequence, we do it in a subtle manner with a little bit of time under tension, we start reprogramming those trains or those anatomy trains and we can help our body move in a better sequence or in a better platform or more safer, if you will. So again, staying in that position, knees go out. I'm going to sit through the profiles of my ankle, my knee, and my hip, and add on to that loading sequence, and then I'll finish 
with my arms. So that's a good start for all these standing profile movement sequences. We'll watch the next video to continue this profile or continue this particular mobility sequence we can start in a standing profile.